Um, and how is your work, your scientific work also received in the artistic world? world? How do they, the two worlds kind of communicate? And Well, that's difficult because I had to make a decision. I thought I can't, I can't, I can't be equally good at both. It's impossible. It's just impossible. And so I don't think of, I mean, I don't think of myself as a scientist, but I realize that every day I think like a scientist <laughs> in between thinking like an artist. My brain is constantly in this state of flux and I can't help it, but I don't, I don't think about it anymore. It's an intuitive thing. So, okay. So with the science, when I, when I was first making work with machines and things like this, I was very much referencing my science background. And I guess I was trying to envisage, you know, deep, complicated scientific processes through art. That's changed because it wasn't coming from the heart. <laughs> and now I like to make work that comes from the heart. I intuit it. I don't think about it. And uh, sometimes <sighs> it's very difficult. I cannot be both. I can't make something and then say, right, this is a scientific experiment. We're going to do all these measurements. I need other people to do that. So um, this is, this is, <sighs> it, it's, it is, it's difficult. Um, it's trying to, the thing that I guess I have been trying to do is to find a language, right? Because one of the problems I think we really, really have is that everyone has their own separate language. And one of the reasons I went off to study art again is I realized I did not understand what artists were talking about. I just didn't get it. I was, I was trained as a scientist. Um, and all this, uh, quite literally to me, it was all very, you know, qualitative and it was all a bit airy fairy. And I thought, what are they trying to say? I was used to A goes to B and all this type of thing. So I think um, it's taught me how to try and find the common threads. It's taught me how to simplify. It's taught me how to say, this is the most important bit. You don't need to be incredibly scientific in order to understand that this is important you don't need to be incredibly art sort of um what's the word um, again sort of you know really understand art language to understand that something is important i'm still i not struggle that's not the right word um it's a bit like my work is both dystopian and utopian, and I go between the two all the time. Sometimes it's very dark, sometimes it's very light. Sometimes my work is a bit more scientific, sometimes it's a bit more artistic. I guess I'm still trying to find the answer to that. But what is lovely for me is that now I'm sort of managing more projects almost, is that I have enough of the, the common language to be able to speak to designers and engineers and horticulturalists and other artists and I can bring them all together. So that is one of the things that I think um, is important. I think we have to stop seeing them as separate things as well. I mean, that's kind of a relatively new thing, you know, a hundred years ago or so. If you go to the Royal Academy, you've got the Royal Society of Chemistry on one side and the, you know, the Royal Body of, of Astronomy on the other side. So they were seen as one of the same thing because it was about awe and curiosity and trying to find the answers. and. With science, yes, we, we're limited by the laws of nature, which we're not in art, but fundamentally we are all trying to communicate the awe of the world, you know, and, and the existence that we have. And again, I've gone off on a tangent. <laughs> so uh, I can't give you a, a sort of, you know, an explicit answer because I'm still trying to figure out myself. <laughs>